Okay, in the last two lectures we saw cylindrical coordinate system. Now we're going to look at the spherical coordinate system. Let's see how points are described in this system. You have y, x, and z axis. And here's your point P. What you do is now you make a, a line segment from the origin to point P. Okay? And so the in the spherical coordinate system. Three coordinates, rho, this is the Greek letter rho, Greek letter theta, Greek letter phi, or phi, would be uh, describing the uh, location of a point. How? Rho is the distance of the point from the origin. So this distance right here, this is rho. It's basically the distance of the point from the origin. It's very simple to understand. Okay? Then, let me erase that so that I can explain the other ones. Theta. Theta is the same one as in the cylindrical system, which is uh, the, the polar coordinate system. We project under the xy floor, and the angle you have to open for this guy from positive x axis, that's your theta. Okay? So let me write down here OP. The length of OP is rho. The angle with respect to positive x-axis of the projection line is uh, theta. And then the final angle phi is also going to be an angle. Is the angle this this the line segment from the origin to the point? How much you have to open from the z from the uh, positive z-axis to make that? So how much you have to open from the positive z-axis is your phi. Okay. Having described these three quantities, uh, which give the location of a point in the spherical coordinate system, uh, let's look at what are the restrictions there. So, rho, of course, being the distance of the point to the origin, is bigger than or equal to zero. Right? Um, and the phi, because you open with respect to z axis, you go this way. If you open 90 degrees, you're on the xy floor. If you keep opening, open 180 degrees, you are with the negative z-axis, right? If you open any more, then what you could do is instead of opening more than that, you make your theta go around more and then open a little bit on the other side. So what we do, we put the restriction that phi is between 0 and pi, right? Between 0 and 180 degrees. Okay, so um, okay. Now that we have described these three quantities, uh, let's talk about when we use the spherical coordinate system. As the name implies, we use it when the we're dealing with three D objects that are more symmetric around a single point, as opposed to around the axis. Around the axis would be cylindrical. Around the point would be like spherical. They don't have to be perfect spheres. They could be elliptical, and things like that. But the idea is that they are something like that. Uh, let's look at few simple equations in this coordinate system. I have not yet told you how to convert between the rectangular and the spherical. We will come to that in a few minutes. Uh, let's first get a feel for this by looking at some few simple equations. Okay, the first one, let's consider a very simple example. Rho equals C. So C is a constant. So, you know, to make it very concrete, rho equals 5. Okay? Before even converting the rectangular coordinate system, let's just work with it directly the quantities. We know what rho means. Rho means your distance from the origin. So if you are being told that plot the surface rho equals 5, means all the points that satisfy this criteria, which means all the points that are distance 5 from the origin, which means a sphere of radius 5, right? So this will be a sphere around origin. 0, 0, 0 of uh, radius 5, right? Very easy description. I mean, you can see why we use spherical coordinate system sometimes, right? A sphere is described very easily by saying rho equals c. A, a, a concrete example, rho equals 5. That will be your sphere of radius 5. 
Uh, how about if I now make the um, if I say theta equals a constant, okay? What kind of thing? So again, you can say theta equals let's say 30 degrees, okay? What does theta equal to constant do? Now imagine, uh, remember what theta is. Theta is that you, you draw the line segment to the point, you look at its projection on the x-bar flow, and the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, that's your theta. So what this will make is it will make you open from the x-axis here. This is your positive x-axis as usual, the way you draw them. You open from the x-axis an angle of the constant c and every point on that line, uh, every point on that line, as well as above that line, right? So, right? So it's a half plane. Why do we say half plane? Because this plane continues on this word forever, continues up and down, but it doesn't extend to the back because the angle we have been told that your angle should be. That's a 30 degrees with respect to x-axis. So, so let's say imagine you know this was the corner here. You open at a certain angle, right? You open a sheet of paper, and but it doesn't continue beyond back because if it continues back over there, there's a different angle, right? It's 180 plus 30. That would be a different angle. So theta equals c gives you half plane. Of course, if theta is 30 degrees, the half plane is extending here. If theta is more than 180 degrees, it's going back there somewhere. Right? And now let's look at quickly example 3 where we make phi have a constant value. What was phi? Recall phi is the angle you open with respect to positive z axis for the ray to reach the point. So what this gives you? It's like saying open angle of c but I don't care how far you go and I don't care also what is your theta. So what will that make? That will make a cone. Right? You open that angle, make that this way and going on forever. So this will make you, uh, this will make a cone where the angle here is C, okay? And it will be only the positive, okay, if this, sorry, yes, if C is between 0 and pi half, meaning 90 degree, it will be a cone that is opening up, it could be very, very shallow, very steep cone. On the other hand, if the angle exceeds 90 degrees, there will be a cone opening down, right? This is the negative z-axis. This is when phi is bigger than 90 and less than uh, 100 and, uh, uh, pi, 180. And we can also look at the special case. If I say phi is 0, which means it's the positive z-axis. Don't open any angle, but that just goes up. If phi is 90, if you open a full 90, which means it gives you the xy plane. If phi is 180, it gives you the negative z axis. Right? So these are the simple examples to get us motivated and understanding how the spherical coordinate systems work. Uh, now, in the next lecture, we will uh, look at the, the algebra to convert back and forth between rectangular and spherical coordinate systems.